Prep Talk. My name is Jessica Lang. Um, I am in the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences here at Drake University. And we are going to chat tonight with a few of our current students. We have three students joining us here on our panel. Before we get started, I do want to ask, um, I do want to ask if you all can hear us. So if you cannot hear what we're saying, or actually please give us an indication either way, yes or no, um, in the chat box, please type in whether or not you can hear us. Um, that way we know that our message is getting transferred. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so tonight we'd like to get started by introducing the three students that we have with us tonight. All three of these students are current students in the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. Um, they're all either in the pre-pharmacy program or in the professional pharmacy program. Um, and so we'll begin by having them introduce themselves to you and then we'll start off with our first question. One of the things we wanna let you know is if you are um, viewing us live tonight and you have a question for any of our students, please feel free to type that in the chat box and we'll make sure that our students have the opportunity to answer it for you. All right, let's begin. We'll have our students, our students are going to introduce themselves by telling us their first and last names, what year they are in the program and where they are from. Uh, my name is Alex Maciejewski. I'm a first year student studying pre-pharmacy um, and I'm from Schaumburg, uh, Illinois. Um, and the reason why I chose pharmacy was because um, it's such a great healthcare field that's um, being uh, growing and increasing and kind of the patient care and I'm really interested in uh, learning more about that and pursuing that career. All right, I'm Megan Krewald. I'm a first year in the pharmacy program, so P1. And I'm from Onalaska, Wisconsin. And I chose pharmacy. My mom kind of pushed me towards it through high school. So I did some shadowing experience and just really loved the ability to help patients in that type of setting. So that's why I chose it. And my name is Kayla Renner. I am from Oregon, Illinois. Um, I am a P4, which means I'm in the fourth year of the professional school, but I am in my sixth year here at Drake. Um, so I did pre pharmacy here as well. Um, in terms of why I got into pharmacy, I have um, a couple of family members and family friends that are pharmacists, and I got to see all the different, just very different areas that they worked in. Um, but they all worked in healthcare. They all got to help patients every day. Um, and I liked that as a, uh, going in, I liked to know that I had variety, but I knew I got to help people. So as we are waiting for some questions from the audience, um, would you maybe be able to talk a little bit about uh, not just how you got interested in pharmacy, but why you became interested in, in Drake Pharmacy, and why you decided to come to Drake to study study pharmacy. Uh, Drake has a really great program, um, the two plus four, um, for students to continue their education without kind of taking the PCAT, um, which is an advantage, the PharmD difference. Um, so that kind of interests me. So it's kind of like a different experience from different colleges where you don't have to take the additional test and. Uh, you kind of stay with the Drake curriculum and continue on uh, to your professional program. Um, with Alex, I did like the two plus four, getting you know done with school a little faster and not having to do the PCAT. You still have to do the you know um, application and everything, but it definitely saved some time. And then I just really liked the feel of Drake, how it was really homey and um, had a really good community feel. Yeah, I would have to agree with both of them. Um, there are a lot of advantages to going to Drake, like they both mentioned, and then also, like she said, feel is such a big, important thing. I've visited a lot of different schools. Some of them were, you know, really big public universities. Some of them were smaller private institutions like Drake, and um, when you're walking around, you can, uh, you just have to picture where you belong, and I knew that I belonged here. All right, here's a, a question for you. Uh, do you all have any tips for transitioning from high school to the first year in the pre-pharmacy program? Um, so definitely for me, uh, my last fall semester, um, it went great, I can say that. Um, but transitioning now, I kind of get the feel for um, what I need to do. Time management is a huge uh, piece of advice that I would recommend for uh, students right now, as well as prioritization. Um, it's definitely a key task to making sure that you're focusing on your academics as well as balancing the social and academic life. Um, here at Drake because there's lots of things that you can get involved in and sometimes that can kind of carry away from studying for uh, important exams, but definitely um, time management and prioritization is a huge key aspect of 
make sure that when you comes to studying for an exam, um, you don't study the night before. You study a bit, at least a week before. So. I guess Alex said a lot of good things, but one thing I think I did my freshman year was just kind of step outside my comfort zone. So you have to kind of go talk to professors during office hours to get help with the classes. But then you also have to go and talk to the organization, find out what they're about, and get involved, and just kind of do things you might not have had to do in high school. Um, I would have to agree with both of them. Time management is really important. Stepping out of your comfort zone is important. And one thing that I found, um, not only when I transitioned from high school to pre-pharmacy, but also from pre-pharmacy to the professional program, um, is reflection is so important. Um, you get so busy in your classes and all the things you're involved in that you just sometimes have to sit back and think, you know, why am I doing this? What do I want to get out of it? Um, and that really helps you create your goals moving forward. That's a great transition because we also have uh, a question about really the, the, the process of going from being a pre-pharmacy student to the professional program. Um, what do you feel is, is kind of most important about that preparation that goes into applying for the PharmD program and, and making that, that successful transition? Um, I think the, for to make that transition successful is you really have to start with it freshman year and really make sure it's what you want and that you're passionate about it, but then you're also setting yourself up for success academically, but then also getting those involvements. And then when it goes into that application process, making sure you're on top of deadlines and due dates um, and just making sure that you're prepared and not forgetting things. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd say that a successful transition from pre-pharmacy to pharmacy also comes with um, just really immersing yourself in a profession. My P1 year, I was able to experience you know, lots of different types of pharmacy, and I joined pharmacy organizations that learned about different types of pharmacy, um, and that's what really got me excited about the profession, and um, I think really helped me succeed going from just my general undergrad studies to such a focused curriculum. And real quick, could you explain P1 in case oh, people sure. don't know? Yes. I know Colin um, say that, but. So P1 is your first year pharmacy. So P2 will be second year pharmacy, P3, third year pharmacy, so on. When you're a P1 year, um, if you do the pre-pharmacy, you're a junior. Um, so you just go by P1 instead. <laughs> so in that same kind of vein about you know, thinking about that transition from pre-pharmacy to the professional program, uh, what kind of support and what kind of help did you receive during your whole time as a pre-pharmacy student to make that success, either from you know from from you know the College of Pharmacy or maybe even other sources. Sure. Um, so CAPS is huge in making that transition from pre-pharmacy to uh, pharmacy, and to explain CAPS, it's um, kind of our uh, like it's a class that is for only pre-pharmacy students to help prepare them for the professional program, which is a huge advantage of Drake. Um, and they kind of walk you through the process of that transition. And that way you're not going through it alone. You're going through it with your entire class and um, the dean of pharmacy and other um, people that work in the pharmacy office. So you're, you're really immersed in the program before you're actually in the program. Yeah, people like Jess um, are always available. They kind of guide you through the application steps and what do you need to do the summer before, what happens when you come back that fall into your sophomore year. And they give you opportunities to do a mock interview. And you know, they're always open for emails. So if you're, I don't know what to put in this part of the application, or I don't know what comes next, they'll respond and help you through. It's not like um, a lot of people, other people have questions as well. So they really make sure everyone is um, getting the help they need for their applications and through the application process. Just as, as a follow-up to that, and, and maybe Megan, Going to answer this best since you did this most recently, but um, what what were kind of the just the, the steps that went into that process, especially during you know your, your second year pre pharmacy leading up to that? What were the elements that were kind of at play, and, and how were how were you you know through your experience able to tackle those? Um, so they kind of start talking about the application process at the end of your freshman year, which at that point you're like, I can't believe this is already happening since you've barely been through a year of school. But um, the application becomes available that summer. So before you even get back to Drake, they, you're able to start um, working on it. And it's a standard application for uh, other professional programs, uh, a pharmacy. 
And so you start working on that, and then Drake has their own form you fill out. Um, and most of that you get done within the fall. And then with Drake, you'll do uh, a uh, interview and a writing assessment as part of the application that also happens the fall of your sophomore year. Uh, Kayla, there's a question for you. Uh, since you are a fourth year PharmD student, uh, do you know what you will be doing next year after you graduate? I do. I um, went through what's called the match, um, and that's uh, it's a residency match, kind of similar to what medical students do, but it's for pharmacy. Um, and it's not required for pharmacy, but it's an additional year of training. Um, for some people, it's an additional two years of training. Um, typically in a hospital setting, but it can be an ambulatory care setting or um, in a community pharmacy, it depends. But what I'm going to do is a PGY-1, uh, just general uh, hospital residency at Grant Medical Center in Columbus, Ohio. And for a search like that that you, that you did, and just kind of thinking about you know, your next step after graduation, what kind of uh, resources were available to you? as a student, as a student here at Drake that can help you with that search and with that process? Sure. Um, I have to say the faculty were fantastic. I mean, I have, um, you know, my faculty advisor who is very knowledgeable in residencies um, and then other faculty members that I've met throughout my time here um, as well as my preceptors on my rotations. Um, so I'm on my uh, fourth year rotations right now where I'm kind of like internships where I'm going to learn new every five weeks. So it's an advantage that I get to talk to new people every five weeks and see what their opinions are and how they um, think you should go about your search. And um, yeah, Drake, Drake offered me a lot of people that I could talk to about it. Uh, I have a question, question from Rachel that um, maybe you can all speak to a little bit. Um, she's asking, is it possible to participate in many activities uh, here at Drake that maybe aren't related to pharmacy? Um, but still handle your your class load and your commitments as a as a pre-pharmacy student or or professional. Um, so I'm currently taking 17 and a half credit hours. Um, so and I'm also involved in a huge part of Drake's campus. Um, I'm the president of my hall for my residents from the Residence Life Association, which allows me to be an exec member for that. Um, I'm part of something that's pharmacy related is a pharmacy fraternity. Um, I'm also part of like different campus activities such as um, the student activities board. Um, so it's definitely like with those are different like subcommittees that you're involved in. Um, mainly for me, I'm part of a um, huge aspect of residence life. So it's definitely manageable to handle that. So time management comes into a huge play. I think getting involved with um, activities outside of pharmacy is a really good thing to do your first few years. Um, I know I got involved in uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters in town and was able to have a little sister and volunteer and then um, student activity board and um, just other general organizations on campus that were more focused on general campus activities. Um, and I also was involved in uh, a pharmacy organization, but it's a good way to get involved and kind of step outside the comfort zone and take on some of those leadership roles before you even start looking at pharmacy roles as well. Um, and I would have to agree with what they said. Um, it's not only possible to do things outside of pharmacy, but it's encouraged. Um, when I look at all of my um, experiences throughout my time at Drake outside of the pharmacy school, absolutely all of them are going to make me a better pharmacist. Um, I was involved in, well, I was a cheerleader when I first got to Drake a long time ago. Um, and, you know, I can think of ways that that will make me a better pharmacist. And I was involved um, and still am involved in a social justice and service group um, that focuses on service in Central America. Um, and I got to go to El Salvador a couple times through that group, do lots of advocacy for that group, and that will absolutely make me a better pharmacist. Um, and then I'm also involved in a variety of pharmacy organizations. So you don't just have to pick your one thing that you like. You can get involved in, you know, 10 different things or two different things, whatever, whatever's gonna make you a better person and make your college experience what you want it to be. Uh, there's kind of a follow-up question about that um, for, for Kayla and Megan. Uh, when it comes to those pharmacy groups, I guess what kind of pharmacy organizations are you a part of? Uh, and there's a specific question about um, some of the kind of professional like pharmacy fraternities mm -hmm. and, and those groups. Uh, do you have experience with that? And what, what can you share about that topic? Um, well, in terms of just the pharmacy organizations, there's pretty much one for every area of pharmacy, and if not, 
you would have the opportunity to look into creating uh, a chapter here at Drake. Um, so there's ones that are more community based or more hospital based. Um, and um, there's a variety of different opportunities to get involved in those. And each one kind of has a little different interest. And there's a really great um, kind of activity fair that lets you meet all the organizations at the beginning of the year. Kind of pick which one you think you're interested in. And if you decide you don't like it one year, you can change and join a different one. Uh, and then in terms of the pharmacy fraternities, um, there's three on campus that also um, do like an activity fair and let you um, get in, or get involved and get to know them. Uh, I'm involved in one and it's um, a pretty good experience and kind of it gives you a pharmacy community. Um, I'd have to agree that like so there are lots of options for professional organizations. Um, ASHP, which is a hospital organization, a or health system organization, APHA, um, just the general ph pharmacy organization. They're ones that are focused on community pharmacy. So um, sometimes a lot of people get involved in kind of a little bit of everything earlier on and kind of narrow as they go through, um, which is kind of a natural progression of um, college, I guess. Um, but really, there's something for everyone. And then in terms of the, um, the professional fraternities, like she said, we have several on campus. Um, and they, they really do a lot of stuff together, too, which is very cool. I'm a member of one of them, and we do organiza or organizational events not only with ours, but with the other fraternities as well. And it has been, um, my professional pharmacy fraternity has been a huge part of my career here. Um, I've been able to have leadership roles in it and um, develop my skills that way. I've been involved in a lot of service, uh, service projects through it that have made my college career more meaningful. And then also I've met my absolute best friends um, through it as well. So um, the, the pharmacy fraternity culture here is a very good one. Uh, Kayla, question for you, since again, you're in your, your P4 year uh, and kind of looking back over your, your Drake experience, um, I don't know if you can kind of pick some highlights, but what, what do you feel were the benefits that you have received by attending Drake for your, your pharmacy? Sure. Um, first, I would have to say our professors are absolutely fantastic. We have a, um, a staff that is very dedicated to their students and they want to mentor their students and want to help their students and they're really looking, um, looking at how they can help you uh, define your goals, how they, how they can help you get to your goals. Um, and I have endless good things to say about our pharmacy professors. Um, and then also, I think our experiential program is a big, big asset to this school. Um, and I've noticed that while I'm on rotations, especially when I look at what our experiential program looks like versus what some of the um, other students that I'm rotating with from other schools, what their experiential uh, programs look like. And it started day one with my first, um, they're called IPPEs, but kind of almost mini internships in our P1 year. Um, I had an experience at a hospital, which actually I ended up working at throughout my entire college career then. Drake really sets people up with um, in areas that they want to be in and then with um, preceptors that like Drake students and want to kind of keep them and um, mentor them throughout their college experience. Um, and I think, yeah, our experiential program is fantastic. Another great transition uh, <laughs> to uh, a question along the same lines about um, but not just for you, but you know, for you and maybe you who have the experience. Uh, what kind of internships and what, what kind of practical experiences have you um, been able to have here? Uh, and specifically, someone asked uh, if, if you've had any experience working as a pharmacy technician. Um, well, I can start. I know through um, networking within different organizations that I'm involved with pharmacy, um, I've been able to receive a job. I've been able to receive a job as a uh, pharmacy um, technician at a local community, community pharmacy um, called Hy-Vee. Um, and with that, I've been able to learn so much, um, just not by training, but kind of the patient consulting, um, as well as through your uh, CAPS job shadowing, you're able to learn um, different aspects of pharmacy that you complete, such as uh, hospital. I just recently did mine um, at Mercy uh, West, uh, medical center and I did mine in the oncology department which is extremely cool so having those experiences definitely helps you um, set up uh, different experiences and help you get ready for the pharmacy program so I started my experiential stuff this fall um, with the p1 year and so um, I have a job outside of um, class at also a community pharmacy 
Uh, and at work, my uh, manager is very much um, enjoys having students and really wants to make sure we're learning not just only in classes, but on the job. But then I also um, was at another uh, community pharmacy in town for my hours for school. And um, same with my preceptor, she was make sure that I learned what I wanted to learn and kind of pushed me to uh, do new things and stuff that I maybe wasn't so comfortable with right away. And then I'm also, um, as part of the experiential, you do um, geriatric service learning your first year. So I get to go to a nursing home um, once a week and just kind of get to know the residents and spend some time with them. Um, so I've had yeah, lots of, I've had a big variety of experiences um, in many different kinds of pharmacy throughout my time here. Um, in terms of outside internships, when I was a first year, I got an internship at a community pharmacy um, and I still work there today. And then I, um, when I was a P1, so my first year of the professional school, like I mentioned, I had an IPD or one of the kind of internships at a hospital in town. And then at the end of that internship, I just stayed on as a, um, a student intern that worked for them. It wasn't through Drake anymore. Um, and both of those technician positions have been great experiences. And then in terms of my Drake, um, IPPEs or those mini internships P1 through P3 year and then my rotations on this P4 year I've been able to be in lots of lots of different um, areas of pharmacy so I've had rotations in critical care I've had rotations in infectious disease in small community pharmacies in huge hospitals or in ERs or just um, really whatever you want to do you can do it and that's one of the great parts about Drake um, when I was out on rotations talking to students from other schools and I'm telling them about some of the really cool areas that I get to go into. They're like, man, you know, our, our school doesn't offer a nutrition rotation or anything like that. Um, they're just some very unique experiences that Drake has set up, um, which is, yeah, a big advantage of the program. So I know we've mentioned it a few times, but I was wondering if, if maybe one of you or some of you could provide um, more details about the CAPS courses that you are taking during your pre-pharmacy time. Um, especially maybe you since you're you're in the yeah. thick of it right now but um yeah what 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 do you the question is what do you do in caps so what how would you best answer that question um so depending on whether you know you're on what caps class you are i had it tonight um at five o'clock so um just came back almost recently so what you do during those classes is essentially um every week there's a guest speaker that comes in um or you just do some kind of activity that you about, um, for example, this semester we're focusing on diversity in healthcare um, and how that kind of impacts pharmacy. Um, but tonight, um, another example would be uh, it, how it prepares you for the professional program. So we had Kate Evans, um, career and services um, staff member or faculty um, that came in and talked about interview tips on how to um, essentially be yourself and how to prepare for your pharmacy interview. Um, we're preparing also with mock interviews um, this spring. So during those CAPS classes, you essentially learn about the different aspects of pharmacy, um, as well as uh, how it kind of impacts healthcare. So. Uh, through, let's start with at least pre-pharmacy. What, what what were your experiences as far as class sizes go, specifically with those those pharmacy courses? Were they big, small, in the middle? How, how would you describe them? Um, in my current uh, biology and chemistry lectures, um, there's about 60 to 70, um, just maybe a little bit larger in my biology class. Um, but what that is, uh, you also take a biology lab course um, in addition to your lecture. And those classes, those class sizes are about 16 students. So it's very small um, or even sometimes even less. So it's really awesome that the uh, professor and as well as the lab professor kind of help you and instruct you one-on-one -on -one, um, with your group and it allows you to kind of come in whenever to their office hours they're not they don't have so many students um, compared to large universities where you know you might have to wait in line for like their office hours so it's really neat to have the professors get to know you as well as kind of know you on a first year on a first name basis and it, it's it's correct to say that as a pre-pharmacy student the classes that you're taking are not just pharmacy students, except, right. for, except for CAPS. Except for CAPS, um, we have different BCMB, so the biomolecular, uh, biochemistry, cell molecular, 
uh, majors as well as health science students. So it's a really wide variety, uh, but obviously as you get uh, into the more professional program, the class sizes will kind of more be pharmacy students only. Okay, yeah, so for Megan and Kayla, I guess the next step, you know, in the PharmD program, what, what do these classes generally look like? Well, I'm gonna go back to the pre-farm um, question as well, because the nice thing about when you're doing pre-pharmacy is you're also taking all your other general classes. So yeah, you have the big lecture hall of 100 students and then your smaller lab, but then you're also taking your history class of 30 students or um, just another class you found interesting with 15 students. So you really get to um, interact with just different groups of people and it makes for a really interesting learning experience. Um, specifically then for the uh, pharmacy program, we have um, the class with the same uh, 110 students at the same time. Um, but the nice thing is we have smaller labs and then discussions that really um, focus in on like 30 students. And so you're able to do that smaller group work and um, you still get to know your professors really well because a lot of them follow you through the program and really make sure they get to know the students. Uh, so that's just been my experience so far. Um, and I would have to echo what both of them say. And then also later in the program, you get um, into where you're taking more electives and the electives are smaller classes um, so I took an internal medicine course that was, you know, maybe 25 people. I'm in a diabetes concentration, or doing the diabetes concentration in which our class sizes are smaller. They're, um, again, maybe 25 people. Um, so you're going to have those big group lectures with your entire pharmacy class, um, therapeutics, ones like that. But then you're also going to have your smaller um, elective classes. Um, as pharmacy students or, or pre-pharmacy students, uh, academically speaking, what are you doing or what do you plan on doing outside of pharmacy? Are you doing any of the, the kind of dual degree programs? Are you looking at a minor concentration? Or is there anything that you're doing kind of on top of just the, the pharmacy program? Um, so recently, I just kind of um, last semester, I declared um, leadership concentration, um, which I'll be pursuing um, throughout the rest of my years at Drake. Um, so. What that is, um, I'm really passionate about leadership here at Drake and how that kind of influences um, campus, making a difference on campus. So one of the things that like uh, the leadership concentration offers, um, there's like different classes and electives that you can take. Uh, they're called the 199 classes. Um, so the one that uh, I'll be taking next semester is kind of coaching um, and how that kind of relates to like leadership and stuff. Um, which is really cool. And then as well as um, for your leadership concentration, you also do a capstone, um, which allows you to kind of make something, make an impact on campus. Um, so every year students do that uh, to make campus, to make a difference on campus and change some aspects as well. So it's really neat to kind of be outside the world of pharmacy and your science and math classes and kind of be in those uh, discussion classes. Um, as well as um, I'm also a non-major music participant. Um, so um, what that entails is I take uh, a 30 minute lesson each week, as well as um, I'm in a concert band rehearsal for uh, two times a week. Um, so being that is kind of fun because it's one of my hobbies that I enjoy doing, um, playing the saxophone, as well as kind of getting things off my mind, uh, not always studying in my room, kind of going into the music building and practicing in the practice room and kind of doing what I like to do since seventh grade. So. Um, I have a global and comparative public health concentration, and I added that my first year. Um, so I just really found public health interesting and thought it really went along well with pharmacy and kind of where pharmacy could go in the future. Um, and what, what I really enjoyed about that is during my sophomore year, I was able to fill a lot of my electives or like the general Drake requirements with public health courses. So it kind of allowed me to get uh, a lot of those electives done without having and taking courses that I was really passionate about. Um, and then I am in the diabetes concentration. It's something that's very unique that Drake offers, but I think that it's a big advantage um, since such a large percentage of our population does have diabetes. And it's um, important not only in a community pharmacy setting or hospital pharmacy setting, but really no matter where you go, that knowledge is really important. Um, and it focuses not only on the therapeutics side or how to treat diabetes, but it also focuses a lot on the psychosocial side um, because it is a, a disease state that has a lot of psychosocial effects on how to treat patients. Um, 
and so I get to take a couple of, well, like she said, a lot of my pre-pharmacy classes even, um, and then a lot of my classes within the first few years at Drake counted towards that concentration, but once I got into my P2 and P3 years, I started taking some classes that were specifically um, only for students in the diabetes concentration, and they were professors that are certified diabetes educators, so really experts in the field. Uh, did, did any of you have experience um, or continue to have experience uh, doing athletics of any kind? Maybe not D1, but um, beyond that, just intramurals or, or club teams or anything like that? Um, I know from my residence hall as well as um, from my fraternity, uh, we do a lot of intramurals um, throughout the year. Um, for example, in the fall, I did participated in indoor soccer with my floor. Um, which was really fun. It was kind of a great way to kind of get some exercise as well as kind of being involved on campus um, and meeting other people um, that kind of have the same interests as you. Um, definitely in the beginning from a first year experience, um, your RA will kind of help you bond uh, with other students and you'll make friends um, essentially and it'll be just a great experience that you'll have hanging out with each other, making your own team and then now I'm involved in intramural softball as well as indoor soccer. So. Um, I do not really participate in sports, but um, the Drake like uh, uh, facilities in terms of like their workout centers are really nice. So I use them to go relieve some stress. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, when I first came to Drake, I uh, was involved in cheerleading here for um, like the Drake organized sports, not um, like a club team or anything. And then um, in terms of intramurals, the pharmacy fraternity that I'm involved in um, has lots of intramural teams. They are involved in everything from soccer to floor hockey to basketball and volleyball and whatever you want to get involved in. Um, I just kind of rotate through whatever works for me at the time. Uh, we have a question about um, what kind of general electives you would recommend. So uh, maybe to answer that, do you have any Maybe something not related to pharmacy, but any kind of favorite classes that you've taken or any any kind of course highlights that have been separate from your your main study? Um, personally, I really enjoy my leadership concentration classes. Um, they're essentially all discussion based classes. So um, here and there you might have to write a paper, but there's no tests, exams, which is kind of nice, um, kind of relaxing from uh, you don't have to study like for an exam, but having those discussion-based classes really uh, stimulates an engaging environment um, which you can learn in and hear people's perspectives on what one is, like what their ideas and perspectives are, the different ideas of leadership that we're discussing. Um, and then just in general, of general electives, um, I personally would recommend uh, something that interests me that I'm interested in taking next year is um, emerging infectious diseases. So it's kind of a cool class that intrigues me. I look forward to taking. Um, I took a day term course this past uh, January, um, which you're able to do starting your sophomore year. And I took um, bookbinding to take my art credit. And it was probably one of the most interesting courses I took because I knew nothing about bookbinding. But uh, in terms of just general electives, you really can't go wrong with some of them. You just kind of have to read a little more about them when you're looking at registering for courses and maybe email the professor if they don't really give you a lot of information or really talking to older students is a really good way to find out what classes you like. But really, um, there are so many courses that fit your interests that you just kind of have to spend a little time looking at them and you'll find something that you really like. Um, and I'm kind of a healthcare nerd, so even though they weren't pharmacy electives, I still took several electives that were in kind of the healthcare um, field. And one of the great things about Drake is we have not only pharmacy here, but we also have you know, health sciences majors, and we have um, BCMB majors and other people that are also interested in health sciences. Um, so one of the ones that I really liked that I took was epidemiology, and there are some other courses that are similar to that, that um, even though they weren't pharmacy focused, they definitely complemented my pharmacy education, and I thought they were a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, quick question, if you can remember, um, especially for you. But um, what were the highest levels of math and science that you uh, completed in high school before you, you were at Drake? Um, for me, the highest level of math I took was um, AP Calculus AB. 
um, or Calc 1 essentially. Um, and what that allowed me to do is uh, I took the AP test, uh, I scored a four on it. So it allowed me to get hit um, for uh, Drake here or at Drake here and um, kind of replaced um, a class that I essentially can take um, a general elective for. Um, and kind of frees up my schedule, allows me to give more uh, like leeway on what classes I can take, what general electives I would want to take. So it was really nice to kind of take those uh, different classes that transferred in from high school, just in general, uh, to uh, allowing me to take different electives. Um, I also had the AP credit for calculus transfer in. And then um, my high school offered a second year of chemistry. So I was, um, I took that my senior year, but I just had um, a general biology um, course also coming in in terms of the biology. So, um, and then for my math background, I took calculus in high school, but when I went to my high school, we didn't have any AP there. I guess I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I took calculus, um, I took college calculus as a um, first year. Another maybe kind of quick question. Um, during the, the, the two years of pre-pharmacy, what would you say was the hardest course that you took? Well, for me Maybe right now, <laughs> I'll say um, Gen Chem or General Chemistry is probably the hardest course um, at the moment. Um, from hearing from different views from upperclassmen, I would maybe say Med Micro um, is probably a difficult class, um, but kind of let them talk. Um, I think it depends on where your strengths are. Um, I really like memorizing things, and so um, med micro, which is a lot of memorization um, in terms of like the um, bacteria and kind of the treatments that go along with that, uh, I found that pretty easy. But I don't really enjoy writing or reading, so I actually took um, two of my public health courses were in the politics department, and they really um, pushed me in ways I hadn't been pushed with the science courses in terms of reading and writing and understanding. Um, more of like the law of healthcare and uh, public health. Yeah, and I'd have to agree that um, chemistry courses are often very tough for a lot of people. Some people think general chemistry was you know, really tough and then they love organic chemistry. Um, some people think organic chemistry is really tough and they love gen chem. I think it really just depends on what kind of clicks with you. I, I liked organic chemistry a lot. I thought gen was hard, but I think it's different for everybody. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a kind of a last call for last question. So if anyone has any more questions uh, in the chat that they'd like to ask, uh, now's the time. Um, but for perhaps a, a final question, I would ask you, um, whether it's related to pharmacy or not, uh, what so far would you say has been kind of your, your favorite memory at Drake, or like your Drake highlight? Um, <laughs> Too I guess, many. I'll start. <laughs> Just because we're um, almost to April, which is kind of a fun month here at Drake in terms of relays and just the excitement on campus. Um, I really enjoyed street painting last year. It was the first year I got to do it. And so it's where we get to all the organizations um, decorate their square on Painted Street. So I don't know if you guys saw it when you're on campus at all. But it just turns into the giant paint fight. And I don't know if it was my favorite part of the experience, but getting paints out of my hair was just <laughs> something I'd never done before. Um, and I kind of have to pick one pharmacy moment and one non-pharmacy moment. So I'll start with my non-pharmacy first. Um, and that would probably be my, well, I've been to El Salvador a few times through a Drake organization, but there was one trip that um, just really moved me. And I have to say it would really change my world outlook. Um, and it was me and 10 other Drake students in El Salvador for a week doing projects and learning about the country and learning about their culture. Um, it was it was a fantastic experience and that was really really a highlight of my college career and then in terms of pharmacy memories one of the really fun ones was last year um, it was on Valentine's Day they gave us our rotation assignments so all of my friends and I got to see all the cool places that we were going and it was a good Valentine's Day present for everybody and we were all excited and trading schedules and um, it was a lot of fun uh, for me personally um, just recently last Friday um, we had an event called Dogtown After Hours. Um, so what that essentially entailed was we kind of met, um, there, there were different activities um, in Olmstead that occurred, dueling pianos. Um, but what the main big event was um, at midnight, uh, we had the uh, Nerf gun fight. And essentially what we were trying to do is set the world's largest Nerf gun battle 
um, here at Trade. Um, and we did break the record with about 600 people um, shooting each other with Nerf guns across Helmet Commons. Um, and it was just a blast. Um, it was at midnight, so students were, it was a, like a great non-alcoholic um, alternative event for students to participate um, in. Um, and there's so many events that Drake offers that you honestly don't need to go off campus to uh, participate in. Um, almost every single weekend, there's something on campus that is going on. Um, it's just really fun to kind of participate in those events. We did have some last minute questions come in, so we'll, we'll tackle these. Um, there's a question about final exams at Drake. What have those been hard or not so hard or what, what kind of experiences have you had with, with finals? Um, for me, my first semester, I only had two final exams, so it was kind of nice. Um, only biology and um, chemistry. Um, with uh, There was also different components with the labs. Um, but for final exam period, I only had two. Um, for me, I didn't think that they were that challenging. Um, the professors really prepared me. Um, I was able to go in their office hours. Um, so it wasn't that much big of a struggle, but don't depend on like finals week to kind of prepare you for that because some of your exams start right on Monday. So just make sure that you're studying ahead of time and making those flashcards as well as study guides um, to prepare. Um, I think finals varies every semester depending on what courses you're taking. I know um, my freshman and sophomore year, since not a lot, all my courses were within this College of Pharmacy, um, they were kind of more, I would maybe have busier days or two finals right in a row. But I know um, the nice thing about with the pharmacy schedule for finals is I think they kind of try and spread us out a little more. So um, they don't give us all our finals on one day. and. Each professor, you know, some finals are cumulative, other ones are not. So it just kind of depends on what courses you're taking. And um, yeah, kind of my experience. Um, I won't lie, they're tough. <laughs> they're very tough, um, especially once you get into your P2 and P3 years, um, where you're not just, you know, answering simple questions. They really become full cases that you're working on, um, you know, solving what's wrong with this patient and how are we treating them and they very, become very complex questions and um, it's a lot of studying for that but that's really what your job is going to be in the end. Um, you're going to have not just straightforward answers and it's going to be a lot of work. So now when I get into rotations I feel like all of that studying throughout school and really preparing for finals and preparing for labs and things like that, um, you know, it, it pays off and now that I'm on rotations, I feel like, man, I'm kind of I'm ready to be a pharmacist. I know this stuff. Um, so it's tough, but worth it. I have a, a pretty good question here, I'd say. Um, question about uh, loan debt. And you know, don't need to get in specifics, individuals, but uh, the question is, you know, what do you think, you know, any kind of loan debt or any financial aid that you've utilized to be a drink, do you think that it'll be worth it in the long run? Um, for me personally. Um, being part of the music program here at Drake, I received an additional scholarship as well to help me, um, so which is kind of nice, as well as um, being participating in the federal work study, um, working in my hall's front desk, um, and then some of the other things kind of um, that I do just to kind of have that extra cash um, is referee soccer in Iowa, um, as well as work in um, pharmacy um, at IP. Um, I definitely say, yeah, the loans are kind of unfortunate, but the nice thing is, you know, you uh, once you're in the program, that you'll be done in six years, um, and so yeah, I, I'm going to end up with a decent amount of debt. But also, when you go and look at, um, you're going to get a job after six years, and you're making a pretty good amount of money um, that you'll be able to pay off the loans. And a lot of the pharmacists I talk to talk about how, um, you know, they have been able to do that, so people are successful with it. Um, and and I, I'm very fortunate I won't have any when I come out, but I have lots of friends um, that have, you know, very large loans, and then actually my husband has a lot of loans from his school, um, but it's an investment. You're investing in your future, um, and it's, you know, an education isn't something to be taken lightly, and I think that, you know, it, it's part of, part of school, and it, like, like I said, it's unfortunate, but um, very worth it. I think this will probably be the last question. Uh, are there J-term courses available for pharmacy students, or any specific pharmacy J-term courses? Um, and if, if not, maybe if you've had J-term experiences, maybe you could talk about that just a little bit. 
I'm just saying um, from perspective of a first year student, um, I definitely encourage that you all attend the J term fair. Um, there's so many opportunities that there are. Um, I know that there, there's like a, a bird class that you can take um, with a professor. He's extremely passionate about birds. Um, there's also a professor, um, a class that you can take um, if you're in leadership concentration. Um, it's called Lead at Sea, um, essentially where you spend a week on campus um, learning about leadership um, as well as like the government. Um, and then the next kind of like week and a half, you go to the Bahamas um, and you meet different government officials and their leadership roles. Um, and then um, the last week you go on uh, essentially like a mini ship um, and a boat and it's pretty big um, and it fits about 20 students, but um, you basically learn about kind of the leadership role and how to set sail. And it's really cool. So. Um, I was actually just looking at the J term courses for next year because I registered tomorrow morning. Um, and so there's not as many uh, pharmacy ones as you might think there are, but there's a lot of opportunities to look at other aspects of healthcare. So I know for pharmacy, there's one I think about politics and advocacy for the profession. Um, and then I was looking at a few that were looking at more exercise and nutrition. So, you know, we're not just focusing on the medications in terms of health, but other aspects of that. And then another unique experience we have is when you're doing your experiential hours, um, you can also do them during January. So you're not doing them on top of um, 18 credits and during the semester you're able to focus um, just on those in the short three week period. Um, and then I can't speak to J term classes too much. I've done uh, just some like service trips and stuff like that over J term, but no classes. I know just J term. Um, some people really like the opportunity to travel for three weeks, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of unique opportunities. And every year, professors come up with new courses, and so um, it's just a really unique opportunity to spend three weeks focusing on a really specific topic. Um, and then just from speaking um, from the CAPS class, we recently talked about um, studying abroad. Um, it is definitely possible to study abroad in your first two pharmacy years, um, especially going to um, like Australia or New England. I met other um, professional students in the pharmacy program um, that have gone there. Um, so definitely um, don't have that aspect go away from you that you can't study abroad for a semester. It's definitely possible and doable. Um, they have great staff here that will help you kind of set up what you need to do um, to go and study abroad. So J term isn't your only option to go in abroad, um, but definitely your first two pharmacy, pre pharmacy years, it's possible. All right. Well, that's going to do it. Uh, really, thank you to, to uh, all three of you for being here and for answering these questions. I, I think that probably gave uh, our, our prospective students a lot of uh, good information. Um, it, I'm going to have uh, up on the screen here is, uh, is contact information for these students uh, with their, their email address. Uh, they've said that they're more than willing to, uh, to chat with you via email. They've also warned that, warned that they're pretty busy <laughs> this time of year. So uh, if you do email them, it, it may take a little bit of time to hear back from them, but um, that's going to be out there for you. Also here, I will be typing, uh, typing in the contact information for uh, Jessica Lang from the College of Pharmacy if you'd like to contact her as well. But again, thanks for uh, attending and thank you students for, for being here.